The year is 1135, and King Henry I of England is dying. The last son of legendary King William the Conqueror, King Henry's strong and effective rule kept the barons of England in line, and his administrative policies strengthened the English kingdom, as well as the Duchy of Normandy. However, to maintain the strong growth of his kingdom, King Henry needed an heir with the right skill sets to manage the powerful barons and maintain the peace. Luckily for Henry, he had such an heir, yet there was just one small problem. His heir was female, and in medieval society, women were not expected to rule or even hold much power unless given to them by their male relatives or husbands. King Henry did at one point have a male heir called William Adeline, yet William drowned in the White Ship disaster in 1120. And while King Henry did marry a young noblewoman in the hopes of producing an heir, a child never arrived, and by 1227, King Henry had to settle the issue of succession. King Henry could have chosen one of his nephews, or one of his numerous illegitimate sons, but his daughter, the Empress Matilda, had recently been widowed, as her husband, Henry V, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, had died of cancer. Empress Matilda had all the right characteristics and experience needed to rule the realm of England, as she became betrothed to King Henry V at the age of eight, and had spent plenty of time in the royal courts of the HRE, learning and gaining all the necessary traits of an efficient ruler. As with her husband away campaigning around the various parts of the Holy Roman Empire, she would rule in her husband's stead, learning first-hand experience what was needed to rule vast territories and maintain it efficiently. The Duchy of Normandy had a long history of uprisings, and in 1124, King Henry had been putting down one major revolt led by the Count of Everu. King Henry dealt with the rebels with such merciless cruelty that his reputation was enough to keep England and Normandy in peace through fear for the rest of his reign, and by 1125, the news of the Emperor's death reached King Henry's court. By the summer of 1125, Empress Matilda was back in the Anglo-Norman court, and began to immerse herself in the political intrigue of the court, learning who the most powerful players were and building relationships with her half-siblings. For King Henry, with his only legitimate child now back by his side, he needed to use Matilda as a bargaining chip to secure an alliance with a powerful family, as his enemies were starting to build a coalition against him, and he needed allies. Over the next year, Empress Matilda would be at her father's side, watching him rule and observing his style of rulership. Watching her father dealing with matters would serve as an intriguing lesson, as she might one day rule for herself, or perhaps rule as regent for her young son, as Empress Matilda would eventually remarry. On the 1st of January 1227, King Henry gathered his nobles in a New Year's ceremony and gave the opening speech, proclaiming that through his union with his first wife, Matilda of Scotland, he had united the Anglo-Saxon royal blood, as well as the ancient Celtic blood with his own dynasty, thus making any children or grandchildren the truest heirs to the Kingdom of England and the Duchy of Normandy, and that none could claim to have such royal and legitimate blood. After King Henry's speech, he ordered his nobles to take an oath that after his death, regardless if he had a male heir or not, the lords and barons would comply and accept his decision of heir. The nobles accepted and swore an oath to support Empress Matilda as heir, as nobody would dare defy King Henry in person. With the nobles having sworn the oath, King Henry's next task would be to find a suitable husband for Matilda, a tricky endeavour, as if King Henry chose an unsuitable husband, it could lead to his plans for succession falling apart. If he chose a foreign husband, it could alienate his nobles, causing discontent and later insurrection against him. And if he chose a local husband, it could cause major power plays against him, or accusations of favouritism, as King Henry had adopted a policy of promoting merit over blood in his years of ruling. King Henry's plan was simple, 
marry Matilda to the right husband and she would hopefully produce a male heir that Henry could designate as his successor before he died. As the laws of the time dictated that a wife became the subject of her husband, but by having a grandson that law could be circumvented and Henry would still have his own heir. Yet Matilda would have her own ideas on how the succession plan could work as she would no doubt want to be in charge of the realm during her son's regency or even rule the kingdom herself. Henry spent the next few months of 1227 considering all the potential suitors to Matilda and after much deliberation, the best candidate was the Count of Anjou's son and heir, Geoffrey Plantagenet. As the Count's daughter was originally betrothed to King Henry's deceased son, William Adeline, and renewing this alliance would protect the south of Normandy. Empress Matilda wasn't particularly thrilled about her potential suitor, as she believed marrying a Count's son was a huge step down from Empress of the HRE. Plus the age difference was quite significant as Matilda was 25 and Geoffrey was 13. But Empress Matilda, being the cunning woman she was, probably knew she could easily manipulate or influence Geoffrey to do what she wanted. The barons, however, were not pleased with King Henry's choice, but few would openly state their objections over fear of reprisals from King Henry, at least while the king was still alive. And in 1128, Empress Matilda and Geoffrey of Anjou were married. Their union would create a dynasty known as the Plantagenets. But as soon as they were married, problems arose, and Empress Matilda soon moved back to Normandy and wrote to her father, complaining about her husband in several letters. The issues between Matilda and Geoffrey lingered on, and King Henry visited Normandy to receive the newest pope in 1131, as the new pope, Innocent II, was journeying around Northern Europe. And after the pope's visit, King Henry returned to England and Empress Matilda joined him. However, the journey back would become dangerous as the Channel Sea was at its most treacherous. The journey became so incredibly harrowing, the royal family were praying to be saved from the storm. The royal family reached England safely and King Henry swore not to collect tax for the next seven years. And by September the 8th, 1131, King Henry organized another swearing ceremony as the situation had changed and Empress Matilda was now married. Yet the barons still swore that Empress Matilda was the rightful heir to the throne and so were her future children. There was no mention of Geoffrey at all. By the end of the year, Geoffrey requested his wife return to him and King Henry agreed. Whether Matilda wanted to return or not, we have no idea on her feelings. But regardless, she reunited with her husband, and by 1132, she was pregnant. Pregnancy was a risky business in the Middle Ages, but Matilda had a better chance of surviving than most women of her time. And on the 5th of March, 1133, Matilda gave birth to a healthy baby boy. I'll give you three seconds to guess the name of the baby. Yes, that's right, Henry! Finally, King Henry had the heir he wanted, although having one male heir was still a risky gamble, which King Henry had experienced before. But luckily for him, Empress Matilda once again solved this problem by having a second son in 1134, although this time nearly at the cost of her life. But, thankfully, Empress Matilda pulled through and soon made a full recovery. Now, life was easy for Matilda. She had two young, healthy sons. She was the heir to the throne of England and the Duchy of Normandy. However, relations between King Henry and Geoffrey soon soured as Geoffrey demanded more power and land to be granted to him. King Henry refused angrily and soon relations became so hostile that King Henry ordered troops to be placed on the borders while he went hunting in the surrounding area. But on the 1st of December, 1135, King Henry died after a short illness. With the king's death, there now would be anarchy.